Hey, it's Todd Alt here. Welcome back to Risk On. It's February 3rd, the third day of what could be the greatest show on earth. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm here with my partner in crime, Jason Bartholomew. We're going to talk about the market today. Jason is a professional poker player, former major leaguer, although you didn't play in the major leagues the whole way, right? I mean, you were a good pitcher, but you got Tommy John hurt. Yeah, I never made it to the major leagues. Uh, I made it but to you're the, on the team, right? Like Cleveland Indians? Nope, never made it that far. Oh, where yeah. were you? I made it to the independent ball, the double A league oh, well, uh, in Wisconsin. I don't know how many of you made it to the independent league, but I definitely did not. Anyways, uh, Todd Altier, Wall Street veteran, executive chairman of all global on the NYC American, which we can never talk about because you can't comment on your own stock. But Jason, we talked about Sava yesterday. Let's get right into it. The stock was 96 some Alzheimer's results, which are near and dear to my heart. Um, let's talk about it. Where is it? What's going on? Sava right now after hours is approaching the uh, $100 mark. It's at 96. Uh, it was 55 yesterday. It closed at 55. It actually was squeezing into the close today. And after hours, I'm looking at 96 printed. Uh, it may touch 100 today. Why don't we get right to a market update so we get that out of the way. What happened to the Dow? What, what are you looking at today? Well, the broader market was actually pretty flat today. The Dow finished up around 64. The NASDAQ was actually in the red at 42. And the S&P was flat. It was up plus 8. Uh, gold was flat around 18.35 an ounce for uh, one ounce of shiny gold. Silver was up a little bit. It closed around tw – actually, it's still open uh, – Commodities markets close at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, silver was 26.90 the last time I checked. Uh, good for a 2% gain. Uh, we're seeing uh, some of the large caps, like Google, was a nice continuation on uh, today. Google is definitely the story. I, I looked at it. It's definitely breaking out from the one year. It's, I think it's at an all-time high, but it looks, it looks powerful. Yeah. It's great. Over and their the cloud business still lost a billion dollars, but they're accelerating. There's no question that Google's in play. That's definitely the trade. Uh, to put on. I wanted to buy some today. I didn't get, a, get around to it, but I think it looks great. It wasn't really the risk on trade. Uh, I would say the risk on trade would still be GameStop. You know, it's funny. Let, I'll get, you know, it's funny, a little commentary on GameStop. If I were the CEO of GameStop, the first thing I would do is raise capital, start working on closing my stores, and get all digital online with that business. They have a chance to raise a lot of capital, a lot of awareness. They could be the biggest online game retailer in the world Qu quickly, right? Partnering with people. Hopefully they're doing something. I don't think we've heard from the company. I don't even know they raised any capital. I haven't seen any filings or any offerings. Maybe you need to put a phone call in. Yeah, I'll, I could maybe call them after the, the, the show. Do you think they take my call? I'm pretty sure they would, actually. Yeah. But it's still holding steady around. <laughs> yeah. Actually, just for fun last night, I bought it on Webull at 1 in the morning or yeah. one thirty and sold it at 2.30. I told you, Webull. <laughs> Webull, Webull, you can trade in the middle of the day. Yeah. I mean, dude, I was up at 2 in the morning trading on Webull. Dude, shout and out to Webull. up with this app? Robinhood, you can't trade until six o'clock on the on the Pacific Coast. Right. But on Webull, I was two in the morning. I was bored and I just did a quick trade and it was out and made I think I made fifteen bucks and I love that app. You can yeah, you can literally be a ninja at like one fifteen AM uh Pacific Coast time. You can see things that are happening. You can literally just go in and go out really fast and uh, go back to bed if you want to. I know Qualcomm just reported they they fell short of revenue guidance uh, revenue, so I don't know if call comes down. We'll check on that. Yeah, for what sure. What else you got today that's kind of risk on? Well, I wanted to just touch a little bit more on GameStop because they, what you said about going to uh, e-commerce, they are trying to do that. They hired a new uh, CTO. Uh, he was actually an Amazon vet, Matt Francis. Matt Francis. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously. Come on, GameStop. Get on it. Get on it. Close those stores yep. as quickly as you can. Actually, you could do a hybrid online store yep. kind of delivery, but do you need all those stores? Probably not. Probably not, but I mean, with, uh, you know, Ryan Cohen was the large investor. From Chewy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chewy was actually, you know, huge e-commerce. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were bought by PetSmart. Hey, if you're a Wall Street Bets guy, maybe the transformation is you took them out of that short, they rallied, they raised capital, and they become a dominant online player in online gaming and downloading and the ability to buy e-commerce. Maybe, maybe they're rescued. Yeah, I mean, they, they tried to hold 100 today. I looked after hours before we came on the air. Uh, they were sitting around 90, mm -hmm. which is still incredible. Let's think about That's that. That's amazing. $90. I mean, when some... I opened up a, a, I think I opened up a Robinhood account, and they gave me one share as a gift Yeah. at 458 <laughs> did, did you Did you sell? No, I think I sold it like at $6 <laughs> or something. Yeah. 
don't listen to me when it comes to that stuff. Hey, Robin Hood's going to be on the Super Bowl. They're going to have their first ad amidst all this controversy. Yeah, Robin Hood's going to be on Capitol Hill too, February 18th. You know, let me get on that real quickly about what Robin Hood's saying. T plus two is stupid. Sorry. The idea, the SEC should allow broker dealers. The, let me give you an example of yesterday. I cannot tell you the stock, but I went to sell a stock in my account that I paid for, and I had it with a small broker dealer, and I had a lot of stock. It's called a couple hundred thousand shares, and I went to sell it, and they would, they would only let me sell a small portion of it. And that's because they didn't have the net capital required to meet NSCC. But I already owned and paid for the stock in my account. This is stupid. And, you know, I saw um, what Carson Block calls uh, SPAC Jesus, which is uh, <laughs> Chama Papatio. Or yeah. I can never say his name right. He's brilliant. I love the guy. But he was railing on Robin Hood, railing on them about illiquidity and how many hundreds of millions he cost investors. But really, the government regulation around T plus two has got to go. I call boycott, get rid of T plus two. You know, T zero came out with that. If you look at Overstock, they have a T zero division. They're trying to do you know settlement same day. Why? Why can't we in modern society yeah. settle all trades at the end of the day? Yeah, kind of makes no sense to me. So they're going to have uh, hearings about that. And Robinhood has got a point. You know, they're they can't use the customer capital that's in your account to pay for the trade. They've got to send money to NSCC based on volatility until the trade settles. So they got to make these billion dollar deposits for something that's already in your account. Makes no sense. Yeah, they can't commingle the funds though. Uh, you know, going back to my online poker days, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had some big problems with that when Full Tilt Poker decided to commingle players' funds. I mean, you had literally people that were, uh, they called them red name pros. They're actually, you know, professional mm -hmm. poker players. And, you know, they were involved getting large uh, salaries monthly. And what happened was when the Department of Justice decided, hey, listen, we're not going to allow you guys to transact fun with financial institutions in America anymore. So basically, you're not going to be able to play online poker for real money. So there was a run on the full tilt poker bank, if you will. And they had had mo uh, funds co-mingled. Right. And what happened was a lot of the players got stiffed. We, we made a, a really stupid mistake yesterday on the show. You know that, right? What did we do? We didn't cover oil. Yeah. How do you not cover oil at 55 bucks a barrel? Yeah, actually, let's talk about oil. Is I, this a Keystone Pipeline issue? Well, Keystone Pipeline was uh, halted from the new administration, costing... Uh, Biden just says 15,000 jobs wiped out. And Canada. Canada right. had a lot of lo you know, logistics involved there. Because you're never, you're never going to need oil again now that you can just use an electric car. Oil will not need to be sent <laughs> from Canada to the U.S. It's, it's over. But for some reason, $55 oil makes sense for someone. Now, just last year, they were giving away oil. It right? was it was, was a, it was negative. Carl Icahn trade, right, where it, he was trying to buy for his refinery. Yes, and so today, oil I think hit fifty seven. Yeah, so something's up with oil. So right? maybe yeah. they're anticipating consumer demand coming back. I think yeah. W not everything's going to be Tesla. No, and another thing about petroleum based products, it's not just for cars and you know for for you know automotive stuff but you know even like uh when this morning out uh, you know i had a nice bowl of uh frosted flakes in a plastic bowl you know it's a petroleum based product really yeah i was gonna think you had petroleum in your frosted flakes <laughs> like somehow they're covered in uh, little drips of oil or something uh that probably would be a problem i don't think that's very funny well let's talk about that though just one more thing about the oil situation you know like you said uh last year april of this time futures was actually wti uh light sweet crude market was negative for a few days sure. um actually uh there was a 1.3 billion barrel surplus oil index is uh up 18 percent. yeah i mean they're ripping them apache's back to 16 a lot of even like halliburton sure. uh devon energy you know shale stuff like that right. uh, those tickers have been strong i looked at the weekly and the monthly charts so you got to call that a perplex trade right because EVs taking over everything and no one will ever use a gas engine again. So somehow oil is 50, 57 bucks. Yeah. It kind of creeps up on you. Yeah. Wake up one day, it's $57. Well, what, you know, what's going to happen, how that's going to uh, translate to, you know, the pumps, you know, people are going to see it every day. Americans are going to see that when, I guess when we reach a uh, $4 gas in the South mm -hmm. or some of these States that has, you know, the lower taxes, uh, not, not California, obviously uh, you're going to see, you know, a lot of people finally say, hey, what the heck's going on here? Higher oil definitely means uh, more purchases of Teslas, for sure. I would think that that would be a positive, right? 
But are they cutting the incentives, the tax incentives? I don't think with Biden, right? Okay. I think with I think with Biden, if you buy a car, you get a free house. Yeah, I mean, everything's free. Free healthcare and free yeah. house, yeah. right? You don't have to pay for anything. Yeah, speaking of that, uh, uh, the New York City, uh, Andrew Yang, you know, he's a big proponent of UBI, universal basic income. He actually is running for mayor of New York. I don't know if you knew that. Is he, isn't he, he's not a Republican, is he a Republican or a Democrat? Yang is, uh, Yang is a Democrat. All right, against Blasio? Yeah, he's running against uh, de Blasio, and uh, actually Yang has COVID right now. I just saw that, so he's mm. going to be quarantined for a little bit here. The math, the Andrew, Andrew Yang, the math says two weeks, Andrew. I hope you feel better. I hope everything goes well. Do you really? Yeah, I really do. He's a good guy. Oh, you like him? He's a Democrat, but I like him. Oh, <laughs> holy shit. Oh, you heard it here first. Jason Bartholomew likes a Democrat. Uh, we're going to put that in the comments forever. Are you, you can, sure you want? We're, Brett's going to save this recording yeah. to make sure everybody knows you said that. Brett, you can add Tulsi there too. Tulsi Gabbard? Yeah. I didn't know. She, is she a Democrat too? Yeah. Right. Oh, thank you for your service, Tulsi. Yeah. Excellent American. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so. if, it, if it has a gun and it's a female, <laughs> you like it. Democrat or Republican. Absolutely. Exactly. What else we have on the agenda today? Did you want to talk a little bit about. Uh, as far as the uh, daily stocks, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, CPSH. Yeah, I couldn't see why that was up. Is that the military thing? It has like these metal defenses for aircraft carriers? Yeah, they're in the material solution in a transportation industry. They have a new contract with uh, the U.S. Navy. Uh, they're going to provide them with hybrid technology uh, armored plates for aircraft carriers. What's the symbol? Uh, the symbol is CPSH, and it is... It was up 140% when we went on air. Wow. That's, uh, is this it right there? Yeah, uh, Brent, can you bring it up on the screen? It's actually, yeah, CPSH. This is CPS Technologies. Uh, well, that's definitely risk on. 42 million shares traded. Uh, wow. Yeah. That stock was 88 cents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That is a rocket. Up 960 today, 138%. Yeah. And uh, 1664 in the after hours. Well, that, that's definitely, CPSH has got your attention. Yeah, that was definitely the, the big play of the day. Actually, uh, just, just to- You can take that down. Thank you, Brett. Buddy. Uh, what did you trade today? Uh, well, I, I filed the 13D on NTN. Right. Uh, I can't talk about my trades. Yeah. You kind of know that. Yeah, that's true. I thought that- Although uh, I do like Boeing. Yeah. Uh, which is not- like. That's not an original idea. They make airplanes airplanes out of Seattle, if you've ever heard of them. Um, so I like Boeing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of, I talked about yesterday, Tillman Fertitta's new right. reverse into a SPAC. Yep. Which is, I think, FTI, FTS. Uh, right? Yeah, it's, it's fast. What's the ticker? Yeah, it's fast acquisition. Yeah. I, uh, I think Tillman is a brilliant guy. And uh, I think that, let me pull up that, uh, what is it, FTS? I think it, it's actually fast, but I'm not sure of the ticker. But getting back to Tillman, he is a brilliant guy. He got rid of James Harden, and now the Rockets are just rocking. I mean, who would have thought that James Harden was the, the, you know, the biggest problem with Houston? You know, obviously, Tillman owns the Houston Rockets, if you all didn't know that. so um, I don't know. what i got to check the symbol. Let me check that real quickly because I actually bought some today. And uh, I'm a fan of this. I love Tillman Bertita. I think, sorry, i got to talk into the mic. Yeah, I love Tillman Bertita. The guy is a, a brilliant a restaurateur and entertainer, and of course, the billion dollar buyer. And while you're looking that up, I, d I do want to disclose I did trade FST, by the FST. Way. Okay, I did trade Co uh, Kodak today. It was halted on news with a deal with Microsoft. Uh, I knew we were going to eventually get to that. Yeah, that, that was like an all in one business solutions uh, software. If you could bring up uh, the screen real quickly, Brett. So we uh, yeah, so closed at $11. Yeah. This is the company that. Uh, Tillman Fertitta Entertainment is merging into. This is all of his restaurants. He's got like 500 yeah. amazing restaurants around the country. Landry Seafood, Morton's, you, you name it. I didn't know they own Morton's. They own everything. Man, this guy owns everything. I love Morton's. Yeah, I think he actually owns, uh, he owns I think he actually owns, um, he bought the famous steakhouse in New York. He is incredible. He's yeah. got it across the board. This guy is you know, it's it's an amazing franchise. Golden Nugget. He's he's yep. he's a thing, but it doesn't include the Rockets, so that's not included in this fast acquisition SPAC reverse. Right. You can take that off the screen, Brett, if you haven't already. But let's talk about um, Kodak because I saw 
that they did a part partnership with Microsoft. What's the symbol for Kodak? Uh, it's K-O-D-K. K-O-D-K. They're near and dear to my heart. They're uh, originally from uh, Rochester, New York, and uh, I'm being, being from upstate New York. You know, I kind of want to see the old guard succeed. Really? Yeah. So this is the post-bankruptcy Kodak, right? Yes. It was up, up $1.54 today, if you bring up the screen, Brett. And uh, talk about this partnership. What's the deal with Microsoft? And I Kodak? think it's just uh, like an all-in-one synergy. Uh, I think they call it Printergy. It's a business uh, software portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's just a one-stop shop solution, so you don't have to pick and choose from uh, different businesses. So I didn't get the details of it, but um, I'm going to look into it and see what happens tomorrow. It might continue. Um, Kodak did. You remember Kodak ran to 60 on like crypto news? <laughs> I saw a stock today uh announced that they're gonna it was like a shipping stock sino and they're gonna mine crypto but they wouldn't say <laughs> where when how and how many machines they have s-i-n-o yeah whatever they're yeah. literally a var yeah they don't even have ships they're just a, like a third party what's that mean oh uh, they like you know some of these uh the greek shippers you know like glb no they do not have ships they're a virtual shipping company yeah they're virtual so they virtualize that they can ship them across the water. Or they <laughs> they're like ship? they're like a wholesaler, like a logistics solution company. They're based out of oh, America. so they're like a broker. Yeah, they are basically oh. a broker. But they're going to mine uh, crypto and uh, do some shipping. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's I don't know. See, I, I know my company mines crypto now and bought a data center, and I can't really comment on that. You can see it on the in the filings. But we actually like bought machines and and had a strategy. Yeah. Although that strategy didn't work the first. Well, who's counting we did learn from that oh that was painful yeah all right so uh brad i assume this is off the screen what else you have right now the i did want to speaking of crypto i did want to talk a little bit about uh the other crypto tickers because mara and riot right and btbt -BT, what the heck is btbt -BT? uh they're a uh, a miner from china and uh, also uh canon c-a-n digital yeah you know, every time I hang around you, I learn something new. I've never heard of them. Yeah, they're solid. They just started. How stupid. They're, they're new to the game. Are they? Yeah. They don't have the uh, infrastructure and the number of machines that Riot has, but they're gaining on them. Uh, Mara had a recent acquisition of 2,400 additional Bitmain S19 Pros, nice. 110 terahash. They'll just uh, add those into their facility that they use in... Uh, I think that's going in the facility in Montana. I think they have a JV with Beowulf with them. So, you know, Riot is now over a billion market cap. Oh, well, or they're a billion six a couple it's, weeks Yeah, ago, it's yeah. just, but that's risk on, like, you know, like we talk about. Well, I mean, the question is, is where does Bitcoin go from here? Obviously, I've laid out a thesis myself, and I believe what, what the smarter people than me are saying that, you know, I think it, you know, I think it could go to a million dollars. And you're probably saying how there's 21 million coins going to be mined total. There's about, I think they said there's about 5 million lost. Yeah. Where they've lost the code. That's incredible. I mean, you know how much money that is? Let me tell you my Bitcoin story. I had a guy that worked for me who needed money and he sold 5,000 Bitcoin for $5. Wow. I did the math the other day and he, I mean, it was sick. I, if, I think, and of course the guy knows, he knows, and you know, I know who you know, <laughs> I know you, you're no, you know, it's you. <laughs> You, you, come on, you had 5,000 Bitcoin you Gosh. sold for five bucks and you needed that $25,000, but I think it's, uh, a lot of money now. Same goes with the, uh, the young kid who wanted some, uh, I think he was, uh, partaking in some, uh, marijuana use at the time and he was hungry and he used his Bitcoin to buy Domino's pizza. I don't know if it was a Domino's pizza. I thought it was like an Italian pizza from like a New York place or something. I think it was Domino's. Oh. We'll get check into it. But anyway, it was like a thousand Bitcoin for a large but pie. The, I don't, did you talk about Ethereum? Because I think it hit an all time high today. Yeah, Ethereum over 1650. Right. Um, What's well, the normal variance between Bitcoin and Ethereum? Uh, well, it's, it's been like 20, 20 or 25 to one, but I would have to look back to the first run up in 2017. When we touched 20,000 thereabouts, Ethereum did touch 1,500. Right. So but now it's at an all-time high. Yeah. Right? What, I mean, I think Ethereum can test 2,000. Where's Bitcoin right now? Uh, 37,000 right. okay. before we so came this on. Is, uh, this is holding this move so far, right? This is a pretty big move. I'm going to check it out and see where it is. It is right. It's a very big move. It's holding the move. And you know a oh, lot yeah, of- This is 37,000. Yeah. It's nicely there. Yep. Ethereum is 1645. Um, 
Wow. So what happens? Do you, I mean, because of the 24-hour commission-free brokers uh, throughout the country and throughout the world, you know, when the market's a... Uh, I've traded on a Robinhood. Like, you yeah. know, I've showed you. So oh, yeah. Living proof. Yep. I have traded that like 20 times. Yeah. Like, it is up... The, the, there's like a ch nice channel yep. between 31 and 38, 31, 37, 38. You know, it, it's been crazy. Yeah, and you're just buying more, you know, buying more coins. I yeah. Mean, you're just I've been trading it, though, to legitimately, yeah. you know, yeah. taking it off. And right. one day I'll be stupid. It'll go through 40,000, and of course I won't <laughs> own any, right? No, you'll have it. Yeah, I have a little bit. Yeah. It's, uh, what else is on the agenda today? Uh, you know, we wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on in the, uh, in the poker world. The Venetian. Yeah. The Venetian. Venetian what is, is it called? Uh, deep stacks. Yeah, they they're pretty well Sounds known. Like a dirty movie. The deep stacks. Right. Why don't we talk about poker for a second? So uh, Venetian's going to, and you know, v Venetian's really good about putting out guarantees. Like they'll put their money where their mouth is. They're not afraid to take an overlay. And for those of you who don't know what an overlay is, let's say you go to a tournament and they offer a twenty thousand guarantee on a tournament, and you know it's a hundred dollar buy in. So you you pony up the hundred dollars. You go sit at the table. And the guarantee doesn't get there. The registration closes, and the and they only get about fifteen thousand in the prize pool. That casino, because of the guarantee of twenty thousand, and because of the uh, gaming uh, regulations, they'll have to pony up the extra five thousand dollars out of their pockets in order to meet the guarantee. So we were seeing some casinos that were afraid to place guarantees on their tournaments, and guarantees usually draw more people in simply because they know that they're going to get at least that much money in the prize pool. So Venetian for March, starting March 1st, they're going to have 28 days of tournaments. Now that's a long series. Wow. And they're going to guarantee over $3 million into the prize pools. And their Cadillac tournament will be a $5,000 buy-in, which is a, a large buy-in. Most of the time you only see those $5,000 or more buy-ins in the uh, large WSOP events. Or in the uh, four times a year, the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood has some large buy-in tournaments. But usually the most you will pay for a buy-in around the country is $2,000. That'd be the main event or even $1,000. So Venetian is known for their guarantees. They put out a quality product, nice spacious poker room. They did shut down some of the poker room. They put up a, uh, like a blackjack studio. For those of you who go there, you'll see it. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But they'll have some overflow tables. And they put out a nice structure on the tournament that allows you a lot of play. You know, it's not just a turbo tournament where they come in, you pay your tournament fee, you pay your rake, which is known as the uh, profit to the casino, and then they usher you out the door because the tournament structure is so, is so fast that it becomes a, basically a coin flip. So that would be a, a high-variance tournament. And a lot of the solid players, they don't want to play high variance tournaments. It's a skill game with luck involved. And, and there's the longer the tournament, the, the more it favors the skilled player. And also for the recreational players, the large guarantees gives them a shot at life-changing money for a lot of people. So I'm excited to see what Venetian does in March. They had the series in February, uh, excuse me, in January, and it was very successful. So it's good to see the poker, the large field poker tournaments coming back to Las Vegas. And uh, I'm probably going to try to sneak away here and play a couple of those. Will you put up 5000 to play? Uh, maybe you can buy a little piece of me and we can do that. Oh, yeah, I have to stake you a little bit? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I can, I can risk off a little bit. Right. That's, so I, I, I'm risk on you're and you risk off. Yeah, that's, what, that's the plan. You know, um, back to uh, GameStop. Uh, if you could pull up the screen, Brad, that'd be great. Uh, you remember that, uh, F deep F value guy? Yes. I yeah. remember him. Yeah. There's a nice article out about him losing 13 million, but still holding on. That guy has got balls of steel. This I don't know if I can say is, that. Uh, gets the golden balls award here. That's just amazing that, you know, the lar the best compliment. He, he bought 50,000 shares at, at 14. 14. Right. Yes. And it went to 400. Yes. And he's just sitting there with diamond hands. That's yeah. what they call them. Yeah. Paper hands. Yeah. But, and you but when you get hands. to 400, yeah. do you think it's going to eight? Is that your... I mean, when is enough enough? Is it? It's all principle, though. What, what is that adage? Uh, hogs get pigs, pigs. Bulls make money. Bears make money. Pigs, pigs get, get slaughtered. slaughtered. Yeah, right. it's a little. I mean, hey, listen, you're smarter than me, dude. You bought fifty thousand at fourteen, but it's but it exponentially. Oh. Uh, let's see here. You can come back off screen. Uh, if you go from, let's see here, from fifty fourteen dollars to a hundred. 
Yes. And then uh, in the, to double again, you go to 200. Double again, you go to 400. You're waiting for eight? I mean, what's the key number here? I think. I, mean, it, I just want to understand his trading strategy. I don't think he had one. I think it was just principle. It's all based on principle. It was just, it was just like he was going to teach the hedge funds a lesson. Yes. Right. And okay. now look. But if he would have sold at 400, he could have just hired like a media campaign against the hedge funds, right? He Absolutely. Have, yeah. He could have spent some of that money. Absolutely. I'm surprised he only lost 13 million. Oh, was that on Tuesday? Oh, that's just one day of losses. Oh, that's right. Because right. Monday he was down five million. Right. Remember we looked at it. So if you go from fifty uh, fourteen dollars to four hundred, on fifty thousand, I just got to do the math there, because it really should say I lost uh, like fifty or a hundred million. Yeah. But the principle was as I held in there. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because a lot of my friends they, they play casino games or you know they play cash games, poker tournaments, and you know there's always a slogan like uh, a little a meme, if you will. Um, you know, one of my friends would come and say, "Hey, you know, you should have came to the game tonight. You know, it was a great game." You know, I won $450 in two hours or something like that. And then I would always ask them, well, well, how much did you lose? Because what happens is the guy will go and he'll win 450 or 500 in the poker game. And then he has to walk out past all the blackjack tables and he just can't get past the blackjack tables. So yeah. they're strategically placed there so you can go out there and, and lose your money back to the uh, table when games. When I was very young at Bally's, I won, I played poker for, or not poker, blackjack for 17 hours. Bunch of Long Island iced teas. I won ten thousand four hundred dollars. I started off with fourteen hundred, and I think then, think since then, all the gambling gods have figured out that I already won and I don't get to win anymore. So you think your run good is over? My run was over like thirty years ago. <laughs> but when I met my wife and I took her to play uh, craps for the first time, I always bet on the person throwing dice for the first time. Yeah, she rolled for forty-eight minutes, and we won like I don't know few thousand dollars the whole table was packed oh there's nothing like there's a good no, yeah there's yeah. nothing like that there's not like a beautiful tall six foot blonde girl throwing throwing dice and everyone winning it was completely crazy yeah that's that's you know. hey the show is about risk on if you got a risk on question put it in the comments what does risk on mean it, listen this is show is about a little bit about my life i have went all in on lots of transactions and some of these things that went to 120 million some of them went to zero and as I get older, I take a little bit more calculated bets, but we like to talk about risk on trades. Risk on like poker, taking a, taking a chance there. Risk on like particular stocks. Yep. What do you think is happening tomorrow? Tomorrow, I want to see. Are well, you a little out of touch? Because I'm not hearing a lot of like, I think the audience wants to hear some good ideas from you. You're just kind of stuck. Are you still on Sundial? Well, Sundial was $1.24 today. They had an offering. So how do you raise all that money and the stock go up 23%? Exactly. It's going to close tomorrow at a dollar. You know, the offering was a dollar. And the traders just didn't care today. They put out, you know, a billion shares traded again. I mean, right. how many tickers can trade? How many shares are outstanding for that? One billion, thereabouts. One billion, and they raised, uh, what, at least $173 yeah. Million yeah. in the last, like, month or so? Less than that, but yeah. Right. So, so someone must, they must have some cutting-edge um, cannabis. Something really incredible. Oh, 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 let's not forget. What? Uh, GW Pharmaceuticals got bought by Jazz, right? Oh, yeah, you were going to talk 7. about that. 7.6 billion. Yep. Now, that's a big cannabis drug in England. Right. They got bought by a U.S. drug manufacturer. I believe they're in Irvine. Okay. At least I know this because I used to drive by it all the time. That's a big purchase. 7.6 billion. The stock was up uh, 58, 59% today. Yeah. Did you just drive by or? I just drove by. Oh, okay. Yeah. What else we got for tomorrow? So tomorrow I want to look back at, let's see what happens with oil again. Right. Uh, let's see if it continues uh, up 2% today. Let's see if there's any interest in uh, GameStop now that all the brokerages are wide open again. You can. So you know for a fact that everyone's wide open, you can buy whatever you want? Yeah. Right. Because I saw 100 shares you could buy on, on, on uh, Robinhood. But now that maybe they raised that $3 billion, they raised yeah. the limit. Yeah. I know they raised, a, uh, you know, I saw on Naked Brands, they, they got rid of that limitation there too, right? Yeah. There you got a $100 million like kind of SPAC, but it's not. It's an operating company that's selling off its divisions and has $100 million in cash, right? Right. It's like a $270 million SPAC with $100 million in cash. I wanted to talk about, well, I wanted to talk more about GameStop because from a political standpoint, um, they're going to have the... Um, the regulators, and they're going to have a meeting with Janet Yellen's going. She got an ethics waiver in order to head up the actual meeting in D.C. And the reason uh, she, let's, let's talk uh, about this real quick. Yeah, I don't want to draw attention to Janet Yellen, which I like. I like her. Well, but she got 700000 from Citadel. That's what I wanted to talk about. Now, they're the number one trading firm that pays for order flow for Robinhood. 
Yeah. I, I don't see any conflict there. There's, there's speaking fees. It's seven hundred thousand dollars to speak. Yeah. And but she got a waiver, an yeah. ethics waiver, doing everything by the book. Yeah. There's no. We're not going to feed into conspiracy, are we? All right. Okay. So Citadel pays seven hundred thousand. Now she's the Treasury Secretary. But she did the right thing. I'm, yeah. In all seriousness, she got a waiver. She's disclosed it. She has done the right thing. What's going on there? I mean, she could have recused herself, but who would have done it then? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, she has you know she has a lot of experience. Right. Former Fed. Now she's Treasury Secretary. She's smart. I yeah, like her. Absolutely. But I just wanted to touch on that. It's you know it could be deemed a bit of a hypocrisy. You know, unless they were true speaking fees, but you never know. Citadel has been known to you know short um, GameStop. And also, we, wait, wait, hold on a second. Just to be clear, we don't have any. You, you, you're, you're reporting that people say that. You, you don't actually have evidence that they shorted GameStop, right? Well, you can look at the filings. I mean, right. I'm, yeah. So, right, we're not claiming they did, but there could be some people think that. I mean, I saw the filings on Reddit, so I mean, it could be photoshopped, right? But okay, we'll just go with that route. Right. But also, you know, Citadel, I mean, Reddit's the new CNN or something, right? I mean, Reddit is Reddit has a lot of sharp posters. They're smart. Yeah, they're brilliant. I actually told you I read it. I read Reddit, uh -huh. and uh, no, no kidding, they're really smart people. Yeah, and there's no question that they're doing the research. Do you think that the hedge? I just funds... want to hey, let me let me make sure Reddit posters know because I know for some reason when people post that I'm overweight or fat, that they don't know that I know that. But we appreciate your in-depth research. Just focus your screen in a little bit. You can tell <laughs> <laughs> people. People say to me, "Yeah, you know, he's fat." Or whatever, like, oh, uh, okay. Is that supposed to be like? No, no, that's just, just the in-depth research part. Yeah, I mean. Right. But anyways, Red, the, uh, in all seriousness, the Reddit people are very smart. Yeah. Some of them have posted some great research. Well, let's see what they do. And by the way, if you're down 13 million, you had to be up a lot. So the guy was smart enough to buy it, right? Yeah. And if he bought it for 14, it's at 90. He still has a big win. Yeah, I mean, he's still up $76 a share. Yeah, I mean, so, who wouldn't want that? Yeah, that's what, pretty good gains. Right. So. Uh, anything else you want? I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, so there was a little bit of stuff that went on Twitter today. Um, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's political. You might want to get it? into it. Well, come on, dude. Well, AOC. Okay. No, dude, dude, really? Yeah. I just want to talk about it a little bit. AOC claimed that the insurrectionists were, oh my God, were actually dude, attacking. This is a bad idea. Well, it turns out that. They found out she wasn't even in the building. But at what the if time. that's not true? What if she was in the building? She wasn't in the building. But you're 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 saying this because you read it on what? Yeah. No, uh, she replied to Jack Posobiec oh, she did from reply? Yeah, Jack okay. Posobiec of One American News. Right. Actually had that and she replied to it. She was in the building adjacent to the building. So there was a little bit of stuff going on there. Hopefully that's not a strike again. Well, this. if it's I'm sorry. I mean it's just what Yeah, happened it's just today. a show. Yeah. Right. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. We're not a political show. What's the risk on there? Getting AOC upset? Well, the, yeah, it could be. The risk on AOC was actually uh, on Reddit's side for, you know, all the, the sure. trading stuff. So was uh, Ted uh, Cruz. Yeah, that's just really weird. Right. The strange, they're like a line now. So you know there's a problem when AOC and Ted Cruz are in agreement. Why? Well, I mean, they have to be in a fight with a Republican and Democrat. Yeah, they're on opposite sides of the spectrum. If on you can, every issue? Yeah, if you can find me another, another incident where they no are. No blood for oil? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, kids in cages, maybe? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, man. Are you going to get me banned or what? No, I don't think so. I hope not. I, I, that'd be the worst thing. I think we'll be fine. Right. Tomorrow's the fourth. What do we have coming up tomorrow in terms of, I mean, major indexes are flat today. Qualcomm missed. Yeah. This is the first report for Qualcomm since they got the new CEO. But he couldn't have done much since he just took over. I mean, really? You got to give him some time. For sure. You to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have any other tickers. I mean, there was AMC, you know, the movie theaters. They were, they were. Uh, on they have an at the market transaction. Yeah. And uh, so they're raising capital. So AMC yeah. is doing the smart thing and making sure they fortify their balance sheet. Silver Lake, of course, traded out for yep. 118 million dollar profit. I did see that. Finally. They had a 600 million dollar convert, and it got ran up to 19 bucks. And they converted out. They put the money in in 2018. You can't blame them. Right. And so Silver Lake comes out like a shining like a Silver Lake. AMC was actually trying to test ten dollars today. They they didn't get, but their... they have an active ATM. Yeah, yeah. They're, if, for those of you who don't know what an ATM is, that's an at the market transaction where the company can sell out of their treasury and raise capital. And they're smart given the circumstances for AMC. I think they could survive. 
I think the ATM is a sound play for them for sure. I mean, Look, there's so low much cost of capital. Yep. No, let, let's talk about the ATM. Yep. They they're issuing uh, AMC is issuing stock with no warrants, a two percent commission, I believe, and right there at the market, so it's really efficient for them. And they're feeding into that volume and raising capital and strengthening their balance sheet. GameStop, what, what are you waiting for? Yeah. I don't no. know what they're waiting for. I have no idea why they haven't raised any money. I haven't said a word. No, nothing. I mean, if you're a, if you're a shareholder right now, are you a little bit fearful? Oh, they're going to come up with an offering? Yeah. You could wake up one day and, and GameStop says, oh, we, we're going to raise a billion dollars. Right. And you're down like 20 points. It would something. be, yeah, it would be right. a big number. If would they, it be? Yeah, I think they would. If they do it, it's got to be a big number. Right. I mean, they're, they're at 90, you know, 90 a share. I mean, what? What do you think they could do an offering at? Or, or maybe they could just do an ATM. I've been actually, talk about risk on, I've actually been buying, and I'm not, this is a show for entertainment. I am not telling you to buy it, do your own research. S triple Qs. I've mm -hmm. actually been buying uh, a little bit of protection, mm -hmm. which is a short against the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100. Yeah. It's because it feels a little like it's thinning out a little bit here, right? Yeah. You don't kind of, it's a strange thing with Biden. You don't know what he's going to do. Um, you don't have uh, all, the, all the cabinet members solidified yet. Right. Um, he wants to spend $2 trillion nearly. Yeah. You've got, a, you've got a couple of people talking about uh, taxation on trades, capital gains increases. Right, for sure. A little bit of that stuff's right. going on. I, th I think the taxation on trade is probably going to make sense to everybody. You know, you trade yeah. a lot, you ta get taxed. Yeah, I think that might, that, you know, that's coming down the aisle. I think that's going to happen. So. Right. I don't know. I uh, kind of feels like things are flattening out a little bit. I don't know what's next. Cause if you look for those GameStop type trades, I think uh, single stock shorting, people are panicked. Yeah. I think you're a hedge fund. You're panicked right now. Like you're like, don't let anyone know I'm short that stock. What's the percentage I'm short. Right. Well now they're like when they come out on Twitter with their, uh, with their warnings the night before, uh, you know, Hey, we're going to have a thesis coming out, a name drop tomorrow. Really? Yeah. I've seen that before where, They'll come out and they'll say, you know, hey, we got, you know, I got a big thesis for tomorrow and it's a single, you know, a single ticker. And then a lot of tickers, a lot of the stockholders will get scared. They're like, oh, I hope it's not us. You know, I think you need to update us on silver before we go. Uh, silver, I mean, it's always a good buy right now. I know, but where did it, you see, you're not making was, a recommendation. Well, right? no, I'm not making a recommendation, but right. it, was, it was 20, it was $27 an ounce. So that was up a little bit today, right? Yeah. And the reason I say, you know, I'm not recommending you buy silver, but. It is undervalued in my opinion. But you are buying silver yourself. You've been putting gold bars away. Yeah. Right? So if, um, if you were to come into my, uh, to my residence, you would see a, a safe with uh, a lot of silver and gold in it. So yeah, I, if you could put up on the screen silver, I think the silver iShares closed it. It's just shy of 25, 24, 93, 24, 97. It's not the true value of silver though. No, it's not. That's the paper value. The paper value? Yeah, we're talking about hard assets, actual physical silver. If, if someone were to come into your house, though, the AR-15s would probably greet them first, right? Yeah, you'd have... Yeah, I wouldn't uh, go into Jason's house. The go In fact, I've never actually been there. Yeah, the go-to would be the, the Colt LE. You know, yeah. that would be the... Actually, you What's know... What's an LE? Uh, law enforcement mo model. Like, is that a handgun? No, it's, it's an AR-15. It's, it's what the police carry. Well, the SWAT teams carry. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. so... What makes but, the AR-15? Uh, well, it just depends. Oh. It's, a, it's it, it goes back to the Armalite Armalite rifles. So, but it's uh, several manufacturers make it. Right. Yeah. So, what about tomorrow? What's the trade? Look at Kodak. Pay attention to Sundial. Again. No, no, no. Yeah, Sundial for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Sava does. Sava. What is? What's the symbol? S A V A. S A V A was ninety six ninety seven. I think that thing's ripped. It's got some Alzheimer's indications. Yeah. Uh, as we all know, I'm looking forward to uh, solving that problem we're gonna there's yeah. there's gonna be more than one company out there that works on on uh Alzheimer's. i should or sorry on alzheimer's i should know a little bit right <laughs> yeah i think you should probably just leave it at that yeah i'll leave it at that <laughs> hey thanks for joining us today it was a fun little banter between jason and i the risk on trade today er, yeah it's gamestop still in the in the area there you got three billion dollars raised by robin hood it looks like things are returning to normal a little bit there we'll see what capitol Hill talks about with with uh the future of broker dealers and clearing I know that uh, Shamath was pretty upset that people lost money and couldn't trade. Yeah. That was a pretty, um, he, was a, he was ranting. You guys got to watch his, his podcast that he's been on. He's been pretty upset about it. Yeah, he didn't hold back. 
And, and uh, Carson Block called him uh, Spac Jesus. Yeah. The- Spac Jesus. <laughs> hey, Shamoth, just for the record, I didn't call you that. I actually think you're brilliant. And, uh, and I, I watch the Warrior games occasionally, too. Thanks for joining us. That's Risk On. It's February 3rd. I'm Todd Altus. This is Jason Bartholomew. We'll see you again. Take care.